Hi, my name is Tony Whedon. I am of Haida and Lummi heritage, and I'm a student at North Seattle College, volunteer intern here at Seattle City Club. Today, I'm a part of a civic boot camp, Native American leadership in the Salish Sea region, and I'll be talking with Takako Wright, tribal development manager with the Snoqualmie Casino. Welcome, Takako, and Jane, thanks for joining me. Good morning, Tony. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely, my pleasure. Um, can you uh, explain your title or position at the casino? Certainly. I'm the tribal development manager here at Smokomi Casino, and that allows me to act as a liaison between our casino, our tribal government, and our membership, as well as community outreach programs. And more importantly, it gives me more time to work specifically with my fellow Smokomi tribal members. Awesome. Very insightful. And um, what role or responsibility do casinos play in the tribal community? They're a wonderful economic engine. It's one of those the revenue from the casino helps fund a lot of the tribal government programs we have. Just as much as society relies on taxes for their education, health, and police services, the revenue from the casino helps fund such programs as well as taking care of our elders, different community outreach programs, and just a wonderful collection to keep the community strong and self-sufficient. Very cool. Um, and could you set, shed some light on the process in which a, a tribe acquires a casino? Or maybe yeah. just Snoqualmie in particular? It isn't so much acquiring a casino as it is creating one. Most tribes will go ahead and select the land whether to purchase and put in the land in the trust, which is what we did, and declare a reservation, or stake a location on our existing reservation. But some of the larger tribes would do that, say Muscle Shoot or some of the others, and then design something that's meaningful, purposeful, search the best architect, and secure financing. That one of the great things about Indian country is the increase of tribal banks. Uh, coming into fruition. We got ours through one of the traditional large financial institutions and happily paid ours off in 10 years. So, Wow, wonderful. fantastic. It is. It frees up those resources to diverse into other avenues or to even possibly look at expansion. Okay. And then um, also for those that are uh, unaware, um, could you help, un uh, help us understand what mm -hmm. Um, a tribal-owned casino is versus a non-tribal? Certainly. One of the things, and also the backtrack to the creation of casino, in Indian country, it's, country it's about integrity. So most commercial gaming still answer to the state or federal level. In Indian country, we have our local gaming commission, which has to be created before the casino is put in place. We answer to the Washington State Indian Gaming Commission, and then the national level, and for us, unlike properties, say, in Vegas or regular card rooms, what we do is with the people in mind. So every dollar earned in revenue or every dollar saved in fiscal responsibility is a means to go ahead and fill the community up better, whether it's creating or expanding a clinic or transportation services. And we work with our seaboard which is primarily our tribal council members. So they meet regularly with our executive team here and our gaming commission. And we have tribal council appointed gaming commissioners. So all of those come into play to ensure that every decision is not only in the best interest of the company, more importantly for the tribe and all the people involved. Okay. Very cool. And um, what, what has your experience been working at the casino? I've been at the casino for 11 years, and it's just been wonderful watching the growth and development and the creativity. Very blessed to work with such a very talented team, especially in our culinary division. We have an executive chef who just recently created a one-of-a-kind dining experience to exercise all the senses, and he's in partnership now. We're gonna do something really fun this summer. It's in partnership with our Snoqualmie Valley Historical Railroad Station. Oh, wow. Local wineries 
and the Salish Lodge. And our executive chef, Justin Lee, found one of the earlier menus from the early 1900s. And he's going to put a modern twist onto that. So just to sort of honor the old, put a twist for the new, and help educate so many. Oh, that's great work. Um, now how many staff are uh, Snoqualmie enrolled or Native America or the like? Certainly. We're currently 1,100 here at the casino. And as far as Snoqualmie tribal members, I'm one of 20, soon to be 22. We have a couple who are about to start here soon. And then we have at least 80 other Native American uh, members from other tribes. Okay. And then, so is there a intertribal network that goes into the works of, of casinos like Snoqualmie? As far as intertribal work, one of the great things is University of Washington, eight years ago, created the Tribal Gaming Hospitality Management Program. And that was started by the Muckleshoot Indian Tribes Chairwoman of we need a means of sharing our knowledge, growing together, and being stronger together. And so we have board members and participants who are from Muckleshoot, our casino, Angel of the Winds, the Confederate tribes of Colville, Yakima Nation. And during the summer, we'd go ahead and travel to each other's properties. It's a three month course live. We're gonna try virtual this year, but a chance to see how other tribal casinos do things sharing our knowledge, sharing our observations, and participants create their own capstone program, either filling a need or providing a service that could plausibly be carried out by their tribe and or casino. And so it's great to see how 12 tribes does things versus the squally red wind. And Washington state is unique in Indian country compared to other locations. Here we share knowledge. It's not something to be hoarded. So if there's a new vendor who's gonna try to make headway into the state, honesty is first and foremost, what tribes sharing what they've learned of what works, what doesn't work. There's a new slots program. Different casinos help send their teams in to help put things in place. So while we joke that we compete about getting the customers in, and we joke who has the best uh, entertainment in we all know who's number one. Of course. It's all about working together and lifting each other up. And we kind of have that reputation. Some of us went to the National Indian Gaming Conference down in uh, San Diego one year. And there was a vendor, you know how you have vendors, Rose. And they were talking about, oh, no, we're great. We're great. Oh, wait, you're Washington State. Yes. <laughs> and so we're known that we look out for one another. And that's one of the great things. You won't find that in traditional gaming. You won't find that in Vegas. It's a matter of how are we stronger together? That's great. That's great. Very insightful. And um, on the topic of, of tribal owned casinos, what, what unique position would you say tribes have as sovereign nations running casinos? We get more freedom on how we structure things in our property. There are some tribes who their entire gaming floor is strictly class two gaming. And the difference between class two and class three gaming, class two, whatever goes in those machines, stays with the tribe to do what they wish. Class three, as far as the gaming compacts that each tribe sets up with the state for that mutual respect, a portion of that gets shared with the state. And Every now and then, tribes will go ahead and negotiate to revise their compact. Sports gaming or sports betting right now is a popular thing. There are different tribes here in the state who have revised their compact to show how that new gaming element will fit in to what we're doing here in the property and still get that approval or show how we're doing it with integrity at the state level. That is... Gotcha. We can also host things. The great thing about Indian gaming and the sovereignty, for example, we just recently hosted a vaccination clinic from February to May. And because it was held on our reservation in our casino ballroom, 
it was our sovereignty that made it easier to partner with our East Side Fire and Rescue to get the vaccination doses. Where she had some clinics who going through all the avenues still saw some of those shortages. In Indian country, that sovereignty allowed for a bit more freedom and flexibility. And so we were able to get a larger number of vaccination doses, allow East Side Fire and Rescue to be the distributor of the shots and arms and help as many people as we can. That's another great thing about Indian country is using those resources to help others in, the, in partnership and community. That is awesome work. Um, that's also a good uh, segue into what, um, what has the casino done to adapt to pandemic conditions? We have an exceptional executive team who's had plans in place even before the closure and doing a slow opening. And this is a great question to ask because today is our one year anniversary of when we opened our doors back for the public. Oh, wow. And rather than doing a free-for-all open up, everybody come, our executive team to help put our guests and our team members at ease, we started with smaller numbers. So it was one of those, let a smaller group of people feel comfortable as they ease into it, as our team eased into it with many safety protocols in place. Then we expanded those numbers. Then we adjusted the hours. And even if we are currently in phase three, our property is set up with extra level precaution as if we were still phase two. So we have barriers in place. We have PPE readily available for everybody. And it's that constant display of safety first for all of us. So just being really flexible and fluid and our culinary team, once again, was very creative in working through the pandemic. One of the things I'm very blessed about our tribal council and executive team, during the closure, we did not lose anybody. We were able to keep all 11 people on board. The tribe saw us with it. All of our benefits were still paid. And that's, that's, great. that's a blessing you don't take for granted. Absolutely. I agree. Um, how has your leadership experience translated from casino um, employment to your other tribal workings? The wonderful thing about it is casino is just one of our enterprises to share our gifts and help lift one another up. Our tribe has since expanded the enterprise collection. We own the Salish Lodge and Spa by Snoqualmie Falls. We have eight generation downtown Pike Place Market. And no matter what role we have, no matter what enterprise, be it with here, the tribal government, tribal admin, our Crescent Market, we all know who we're working for. And it's to help provide for our fellow co-workers beside us, and more importantly, our tribe. So for me, it's not only just building leaders to find a new path here at the casino, or better still, taking their talents and skills to the next level of any other direction. We've had members who are taking on great leadership roles in tribal government or part of our special project teams. And so we know not to take things for granted, that what we do helps support one another, what happens at the lodge, helps time with what we do here, what eighth gen does. So for us, it's interconnectedness. And even for members who don't work for any of the enterprises, we all know that what we do has a purpose. And it's what can we do, what can we share to take it further? And the executive leadership team here has a belief of those of you who are gaining skills, be it from entry level to supervisor, manager, or even director, it's one of those, it goes beyond these walls. Aim big, aim high, and know that you're limitless. It's a matter of what energy you put into it, it'll work. I 100% agree. That's awesome. Um, and what are you most proud of in your career at the casino? I love working with all of my team members. And one of the joys during the summer is we have a student internship 
with our high school tribal youth. And for me, the joy is seeing what direction they take it. We started as a one day visitation program of the high schoolers here at the casino of, hey, we're more than table games, more than beverage service, come and learn. And one of those young people said, you know what? I, it's, it's my turn to tell our story with our voice. And she's done a phenomenal job. Another member in that group worked with us for a while in different departments, went and got her degree at UNLV, and she's currently excelling in one of the properties down in Vegas. And seeing some of those interns come back, in fact, we have a few here who said, hey, it's my turn. I want to be able to contribute and help inspire the next generation. And so it helping them find their path and helping them encourage others. I have one tribal member who part of leave six years ago this month was hesitant about putting an application in. They said, what do you have to lose? That's what I was told when I applied almost 12 years ago. So if I can take the plunge, you can too. And there are other members here who can help you from C for Swim. And he's risen in the ranks to a supervisor role. And one of his joyous days was getting his younger sibling to join the team. And it's such a family business. I work with one of my parents here. There is another member whose son just started working here. We have a lot of siblings. And of course, we're all cousins. So it's one of those we joke of, we got to get more family in to join a family fund. Come on now. <laughs> the family business. Exactly. And no one ever providing for not only our family, but for the families of our team members and that community outreach. One of the things we were able to do when we shut our doors was take all of our produce in our casino pantry and donate to families in need and to help uh, fill food bank pantries, put together care packages. And are you familiar with the um, Peacekeeper Society of Yakima Nations? Not Yakima, but I, I think I've heard of Colville. Like, well, if you get a chance, they're a wonderful organization of volunteers from Yakima Nation who traveled the state and did what they could to help lift folks up in need. And a few months ago, we had a chance to work with them. We had volunteers from the casino, the tribe, and the community. And we were able to assemble over 300 care boxes and help over 400 families in need. And it's that opportunity there, again, of coming together, the difference of tribal gaming versus commercial of an Indian country we come together to help fill a need. It is just very powerful stuff of, of how communal and socially conscious so much of the networkings are as far as input, output, community, all of it. That's that's fantastic. Um, I, I guess to, my last question is, can you give us an idea of what the future of Snoqualmie Casino looks like? It's going to get better. We've actually had a fantastic year, even in the middle of a, a pandemic, if you will. Our entertainment team is gearing up. Tickets are on sale now for their summer concert series. And our culinary team is just, take, just turning up the heat, if you will, on their offerings. And each of the departments are just getting ready to shine even brighter than we've been. And with the excellent leadership we have with our um, officially appointed president, CEO Stanford Lee, the tribe made that official just recently, he and the rest of the executives, it's one of those, what can we do to take it to the next level of letting people know, yes, we're a casino and we're much more than that. So it's going to be a wonderful year. I bet. I look forward to it. Thank you, Takako, for joining me today. I really enjoyed speaking to you about your leadership roles in tribal gaming and some insight into casinos. And I'll definitely have to make a trip out to snuff on me. Absolutely. I also like to thank our uh, sponsors, Alaska Airlines, of our civic boot camps, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.